It's hard to look at the darkness of the internet nowadays and see the optimistic future that we once envisioned. When the internet was first made a reality, it served as a way to connect people in ways that was never possible before. However, something changed. There was a point in time that changed the way people interact on the internet. This turning point wouldn't come from the dark web. It wouldn't come from the piracy, or the scams, or the violence present on the internet. It didn't come from any of these. It came from... a meme. On May 28, 2016, a young child fell into the gorilla enclosure at the Cincinnati Zoo. The gorilla picked up the kid and dragged him through the enclosure, posing a serious threat to the small child. The decision to take the gorilla's life was made by the security and wildlife team of the Cincinnati Zoo. Months later, for a seemingly arbitrary reason, the internet grabbed onto this gorilla named Harambe and turned him into a national meme. Although nowadays he is seen as a completely unfunny and cringy meme, it seems that the real story is forgotten. A story of how corrupt the internet has become. A story of the dangers the Harambe street, inspired. The and a story of the violence that ensued. Harambe, Moments after the incident, it seemed as if the story was everywhere. Harambe's death was covered on nearly every major news outlet. Did the zoo make the right call? A zoo under fire for shooting and killing an endangered gorilla. That gorilla was not acting violently towards that child. They made the absolutely right decision. Why was there not a third option? Over time, people lost interest, as they normally do. The next news cycle came in washing all memories of Harambe from the American public and gave the world another tragic story. So what is so unique about Harambe? How is he the turning point? And what am I getting at? On July 4th, 2016, months after the initial incident, comedian Brandon Wardell tweeted out the phrase, Dicks out for Harambe. Perhaps it was a satirical joke about the people who decided to protest, or maybe it was a dumb joke about a dead gorilla. Either way, no one including Wardell could have known what would come next. This is an interesting sign. What does this mean? Uh, Keep it up for Harambe! All right. Dicks out for Harambe. One of the biggest explosions in meme culture happened. The tweet went viral and so did Harambe. Oh! Harambe Harambe, I'm glad he died. Harambe 2016, remember the name! For the first time in the history of the internet, mass groups were uniting over this abstract joke, all forming with no clear intention. Harambe was essentially one of the most talked about events of the summer of 2016. It's everywhere. It's the meme of the century. Elon Musk made a song over him. He was acknowledged by some of the biggest YouTubers on the site. Dicks out for Harambe. At one point in time, Harambe was searching more than our president at the time, Obama. And it wasn't even close. During the 2016 national election, a large number of people voted for Harambe as a writing candidate. And the craziest, someone on eBay made a $100,000 bid on a Cheeto just because of its resemblance to Harambe. The Cheeto, supposedly resembling that slain gorilla Harambe, reportedly sold on eBay for almost $100,000. On change.org, there was a petition put up to bring the parents responsible for the kids' fall into the enclosure. The creator of the petition advocated for a fair and just punishment of the mother. However, the majority of contributors of the petition called for her death. Although it started as a joke, the internet began to morph the concept into something much more deadly. This petition garnered over 513,000 signatures. Even through all my research of Harambe, I still can't explain the craze. What made all of these people act this way? Why have we never seen the internet act like this before? Why did everyone unite over something like this? And the most important question, what's next? Harambe as a meme was inherently harmless. The danger only came when the internet blew this out of proportion. Looking back at the meme, there is really no reasonable explanation for this behavior. And that's the scariest part. Because if the internet would ever get so violent over something so abstract and meaningless such as Harambe, then what would follow in its footsteps? Harambe might have been the first time that the internet united together in this fashion, but it wouldn't be the last. The upcoming examples can be very dangerous, viewer discretion is advised. So what exactly did Harambe inspire? One example is the early 2018 viral trends the Tide Pod Challenge. In short, this movement revolved around the laundry detergent Tide Pods, with each participant trying to eat a Tide Pod. The danger of the Tide Pod Challenge is painfully obvious, yet that didn't stop dedicated individuals to risk their lives for the sake of a meme. In an article published by Harvard Health, 
They argue that this was all started by peer pressure found online. In recent years, social media has provided a platform where essentially millions of people can virtually pressure you into different situations. Quote, That's why the American Association of Poison Control Centers reported 86 intentional exposures to laundry detergent packets in the first week of 2018. And those are just the first ones that got reported. End quote. Much like Harambe, the mob mentality of the internet came together once again. And in this case, it ended with multiple teenagers' deaths on their hands. A year after Harambe, an underground movement started to form, simply titled the Blue Whale Challenge. Just like the meme-inspired Tide Pod incidents, the Blue Whale trend evolved around the internet fascination to a deadly era in the depths of the internet. Spanning in multiple countries, the Blue Whale movement was essentially a game that had 50 different challenges. It started off relatively harmless. If anything, the first challenges were more unusual than they were dangerous. Some challenges like wake up at 4.20 a.m. or draw a whale on a piece of paper showed no signs of inherent danger in the online trend. As the game progressed, however, the true intentions of the game began to be foreshadowed. Challenges grew darker, such as asking participants to cut their lip and to stand on a bridge with your legs dangling over. The internet continued its fascination, and dedicated members didn't remember the innocent meme that it started from. The whole idea of mob mentality influenced thousands of teenagers to participate in this group, just like the cult-like attitude of previous internet events. The Blue Whale Challenge continued to ask more and more from their participants. Challenges grew violent. Carve an image of a whale into your skin. Cut your wrist. It became clear that the path of the internet was on. The participants were then instructed that in order to win the game, they had to complete the last and final challenge. They had to kill themselves. And they did. New tonight, with so many digital dangers and threats online. Social media threatening like it's never threatened before. The new game is doing the rounds on the internet. It's called the Blue Whale Challenge. School districts across the country it's sent the notices to challenge. parents about, about the Blue Whale Challenge. The Blue Suicide Whale Challenge. Game online. Unidentified 16-year-old also took her life for the game. Texas killed himself. Eventually, things start to get dangerous. It was reported that in a span of six months, 130 teen suicides could be linked to the online challenge. It is important to recognize who and what is responsible for the rise of violence on the internet. It isn't the totality of the internet or the meme itself. The dangers come in through the small number of people that find themselves deeply engrossed in the movements. After the death of Harambe, the Independent had this to say about the memes. Quote, In other instances, I think it would certainly be used to quickly connect with others who are feeling disturbed, vulnerable, or frightened." End quote. The internet can connect individuals who lack this sense of connection, and they sometimes can find themselves in a community that gives them a sense of purpose. However, this sense of purpose can easily be twisted and manipulated. The death of Harambe showed the internet how widespread this unification can be and laid the framework for other movements. If Harambe was the first time the internet banded together with seemingly no motivation besides an abstract meme, and if the Blue Whale and Tide Pod challenges are examples of the internet banding together again, then what's next? In 2016, Harambe was shot, and the internet changed. In 2017, the Blue Whale challenge took 130 teenagers' lives. In 2018, the Tide Pod challenge poisoned 220 teens. In 2019, the Area 51 raid looked to have major effects if the virality didn't die before it was scheduled to take place. What's going to happen in 2020? 2021? What is the internet going to look like in 10 years? The last thing I'm trying to suggest is that the memes are the problem, because frankly, that's not true. The problem lies within us. Harambe wasn't a turning point in memes. It was a turning point in online human behavior. It showed just how fast people could unite over the internet, I'm not making this to try and scare. I'm not calling anybody to action to change the course the internet is headed on, because I don't believe there is a way we can change the path. Unless we can manage to change the depths of the internet, unless we can reach the unheard, and unless we can change human behavior in and of itself, but I don't think we can change. A new age of the internet has been born, and it doesn't seem like anyone noticed. Something inevitable is coming. Something dark.